saw the rules we may write in transactions. We said that we don't need to specify when each of them is to be executed, because Genexus determines the triggering moments for that. Most often, the rules we define are executed at the moment intended, but in some cases, we might need to modify those moments. Let's consider an example. Suppose that for each flight, the airline will control that an incorrect number of seats is not entered, such as having each flight with no less than 8 seats. Remember that we had the flight capacity formula attribute to count the number of seats. When we enter a new flight, we want the corresponding control to take place with no possibility for saving that flight if the condition established is not fulfilled. To this purpose, we will declare a rule in the transaction that records the flights based on the flight capacity attribute that counts all seats on the flight. Therefore, we go to the rules section and declare an error rule that will prevent us from saving a flight with less than 8 seats. So we write error the number of seats cannot be less than 8 if flight capacity is less than 8. We then close with a semicolon and then we press F5. Now we will open the flight transaction to create a new flight and we can see that the error is now being triggered. Why? Because the formula is triggered as soon as possible and it changes as new lines are added. The problem is that at the beginning, we did not have time to enter any lines, so the flight capacity formula will be triggered with a result of zero, which is less than eight. We could then think of conditioning the error, so we can allow some time to enter lines. We press F5. We open the flight transaction, and we leave the identifier value empty because it is auto-numbered. We enter a flight from the Guarulhos Airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil, to the Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France. The flight price is 3000 with a 10% discount, and the airline is TAM. We now enter seat 1, letter A, window, and upon exiting the line, we will see that the error message is displayed. We obviously do not want the error message to be triggered here because we have not entered all seats yet. It is clear that if we enter a single seat, we will have less than 8 seats entered and the error rule should be triggered. But what we need is for the seat number control to take place after the user has finished entering all the seats. To make this possible, we must condition the rule so it will be triggered after we have finished working with the grid lines. To do that, we write the following. On after level, level, flight seat char. The on after level moment will cause the rule to be triggered after a level is finished. Since in our case, this would have to be after the grid seat line's level is completed, we then add level flight seat char because this attribute is at the seat's level. We could have used any of the other attributes in the level, such as flight seat location. This is how we instruct Genexus that the rule must be triggered after entering the data in the location of the flight seat char attribute. That is to say, after entering the header data for all seats on the flight. The assessment carried out by the error rule makes sense, because at the triggering moment, all seats that the user wished to enter will have been entered, and it will be possible to verify that at least 8 seats have been entered. We then press F5. And now, we open the flight transaction to enter a new flight. So we repeat the data that we used before. A flight from the Guarulhos Airport to the Charles de Gaulle Airport 
with a price of 3000 10% discount, and the TAM airline. And then we enter the seats. One, A, window, one, B, aisle, two, A, window, two, B, aisle. And now we press confirm to indicate that we're finished entering the flight data, including the seats, and that the flight may be saved to the database. So what happens from this point on? The header and lines data is sent to the server and they're processed one by one, triggering the corresponding rules. When all header data has been validated, the record is inserted in the table. And the same is repeated for each line. Once the processing of all lines is completed, then comes the after level moment when all the rules conditioned to that moment are triggered. Note that the header and lines data is already saved in the database. If we now go back to our transaction at runtime, we will see that upon confirming, Genexus will indicate the error, as expected, since we only entered four seats, and it will not save this flight to the database because an error rule will undo any saving done. And now we complete the eight seats required by typing three A window three B aisle four A window and to finish four B aisle and we now press confirm and we will see that Genexus allowed us to save the flight without any problems. To sum up, we will achieve our goal by delaying the moment initially selected by Genexus to trigger the error rule. We had flight 1 with 7 seats because we added the error rule afterwards. As long as we don't try to save this flight, the error rule will not be controlled because, as we saw, it will be executed after confirming, when all the data is sent to the server. If we press confirm, we will see the message. So we add a seat to this flight, two, B, aisle, and we save. And now it will work. Our last step will be to enter a new flight with no seats. and it allowed me to save it. Why? Because we have the following condition, which we entered incorrectly, unaware of the existence of after level. So we delete it, and the rule will be written as follows. We press F5, and we edit the flight with no seats, and we will now see that if we confirm again, the control will apply, not allowing us to enter it. We eliminate it by pressing delete. Now let's get back to Genexus to save the changes that we made to our knowledge base and to the Genexus server. With this example, we showed that there are cases where the moment selected by Genexus to trigger a rule is not suitable for our purposes. So we must indicate to Genexus the moment at which we desire the rule to be executed. In this case, we saw the on after level moment to indicate that we want the rule to be triggered after we have run through one level. This could be useful, for example, to call a listing that will print flight data because, as we saw, in the after level, the data will already be saved to the database, although it will be deleted if an error rule is triggered. In the case of the listing, it would be best to invoke it later on when we are sure that the data will not be deleted. This is possible after doing a commit a command that we will comment on further ahead, whose effect is to verify the data inserted as correct. The moment following the commit is after complete, from where we could invoke the listing. There are other moments, such as on after insert, 
to indicate that the rule will be triggered immediately following the saving of each header, or line. Also, on, before insert, for when we want to do or assess something immediately before the saving of the header, or line data, in the database. Note that all the triggering moments start with the on prefix, and they are always written after the rule declaration. Here we've only presented the most important ones, but there are other triggering moments that we will not consider here, but which are available for you to find out about.